so before we open for general discussion, uh, Professor Richard Huberton will make his reply to, to comments. Well, I'll be very brief by the patient. Uh, I want to thank Fred and uh, Sandra for uh, the comments. I wasn't thinking of the switching, uh, as you know, um, hypothesis where you start out in uh, a world where your sensory apparatus are working reliably and then you end up in a, one of the skeptical scenarios. I was just engaged in the rather more straightforward thought experiment in which you compare two people in two possible worlds. In the one world that uh, uh, the evidence, um, precisely the evidence we have, it's the world they take themselves to be in, and they've got what most anti-skeptics think are justified beliefs. In the other world, they have, at least phenomenologically, indistinguishable evidence and uh, are believing massive falsehoods because of the unfortunate circumstances in which they find themselves. And I've got Maybe you don't, but I have the strong uh, intuition that you ought to say the same thing about people in those two worlds, as far as justification. Uh, and if you're not a skeptic, you're also going to think that they've got justification, good justification in both worlds for believing what they believe. And uh, if you think about what all that involves, it seems to me it's tantamount to admitting uh, that you think it's a necessary truth that with evidence like this and no counter evidence uh, you're justified in believing what you are justified in believing what you believe about your physical environment um, I, I do want to i'm not going to talk about the the claim that there's still regress lurking in the background i, I just do want to make clear that inferential internalism as I understand it, it's not a view that commits one to general access internalism. I think it's actually fatal to require for non-inferential justification access to uh, the fact that the justification exists. Uh, I think that does generate vicious regress. Um, inferential internal is not committed to that, so that's good. Uh, kids and dogs, uh, I do think you probably should develop uh, all kinds of derivative concepts of justification that can apply to uh, um, adults and kids and dogs and other creatures. Um, er Ernie and Ernie Sozo and lots of papers argues that you start with kind of a basic knowledge and get more intellectually satisfying knowledge by layering conditions on top of it. I actually think a better approach is to start with an ideal justification and start uh, developing um, uh, less philosophically interesting concepts of justification by stripping stuff away. So for example, you can easily imagine people who are caused to believe something by facts that are the truth makers for propositions that do stand in relation to uh, making probable to various conclusions. I mean, this all has to be worked out in a little more detail than that. And you can call that sort of uh, uh, belief a justified belief. You might wonder what the advantage of doing this is over uh, the alternative approach embraced by externalists. But I think the advantage is just that you can handle the demon world hypothesis, uh, hypothetical situation in the way it should be handled. You can end up saying that the people in that world have justified beliefs, even the dogs and cats in that world have. Um, justified belief in some even derivative sense of justification. Um, Alexandre, I certainly agree with what I think you'd be saying that um, um, to, to fill out the enzymatic reasoning, you certainly don't need to turn to complex propositions of physics or biology or chemistry, fortunately for me, otherwise I'd never be able to fill out my uh, uh, and cinematic reasoning. Um, I might even agree that uh, the, the conditions I stated for inferential justification aren't sufficient. I didn't intend them to be sufficient. It was, a, it was an only if, not an if and only if uh, claim. Although, um, I guess when I see entailment holding between propositions, I don't really care how bad my teacher was who got me causally 
to see that impalement. Uh, if, on the other hand, it's a different situation in which I'm relying on authority, I don't see the impalement, but my inferential investigation is a lot more complicated than that, then indeed this would constitute a defeat to that uh, uh, defeat justification. Um, that's enough. Let, let, let's turn it over to questions. Yes. Yeah.